Hello folks, welcome to my channel. I'm Dan Delimarski, your resident code tinkerer. I think that's a word. And today I'm gonna to be showing you a project that I've recently been building called DeckSurf, which is a software development kit or an API for your Stream Deck. Because what I noticed is that when I try to use the Stream Deck in a way that I want to, the baseline functionality that comes out of the box with the software is a little bit limiting. It doesn't give me the ability to do a lot of the custom graphics and inspecting traffic that is shown in buttons because why not? And so what I decided to do is reverse engineer the USB protocol and try to make sure that I can control the stream deck in a way that my applications want or how I want to do that. So enough of me talking, I'll jump right to code to show you how it works. So I'll switch my screens. And what I'm gonna do is as I switch screens, I'm also gonna jump right into Visual Studio. And what I have here is a demo project. Now, don't get too intimidated by this. This is a plain console applications built for .NET 5.0. That's it. That, this is the secret of what you see right now on the screen. What I'm gonna do here first is I wanna do dependencies and manage NuGet packages. And I will uh, actually, let's see, DexServe SDK is already online. So I'm gonna make sure that it's uninstalled. Oh, actually it's uninstalled because it's, it's, it's been installed and now I just need to uninstall it. So I'm gonna take this, select install and make sure that I accept the terms of the license. And now I have the SDK added. So the SDK, is on NuGet. It's a preliminary version, it's not final. There's still a lot of changes that I need to make sure that are done to make this stable and usable, but it's there if you want to experiment. So I will close this NuGet view and go to my program. And so what I'm gonna do in the program here is use a device manager class. So the device manager class is used to control your stream deck and it's in the DeckSurf SDK core namespace. Now, this is a static class for now, so you don't actually need to instantiate it. But what I'm gonna do is device manager dot get device list. This should actually get me a list of devices that are currently connected that identify as stream decks. So this returns an I enumerable. So this means that I can get a list of instances that point me to those devices. So I will get that list here. That looks nice even though we didn't do anything. But what I'm gonna do next is iterate through this list so you can actually see that this is real. And for each, and we'll do device in devices, and we'll write it to console because why not? We're not gonna do anything super fancy. So write line device dot button count or maybe model or name Eh, let's do model. That sounds easy enough. And let's see, for the last line here, I'm just gonna edit this and say done. Because this is when the code is done. And now I'm gonna run this and let's see what happens. Fingers crossed that all works. All right, so XL, done. This is great because it means it detected my Stream Deck XL that is currently connected to the machine. Fantastic. All right, mission accomplished. But this is too easy, right? Because again, this is where I have a little bit of a hesitation. We're like, okay, this demo is a little bit too simple. So let's go a step beyond. Now I still have my device manager class, but what I can do is listen when buttons are pressed. I'm gonna do the unsafe code here and I'm gonna do devices at index zero. Not the safest thing because I don't actually know if there's array elements in it, but let's assume at, well, and actually because this is an I enumerable, I need to get it. Um, well, I need to translate it to a list. So I'm gonna do list. Uh, connected device. Okay, now let's make sure that we get the generic devices, and then that. So we're gonna use this wrapping and then say count. Well, and actually we can do zero dot on button press. This is the event handler that happens when every button on the device or any button on the device is pressed. 
plus equals to create uh, a new event handler. And so what we're gonna do here is, again, when a button is pressed, what we wanna do is make sure that the console just shows a message. So console dot right line. Let's see, what do we wanna show in the console? So what I suggest here is that we're gonna show e dot ID, which is the numerical identifier of the button. So I'm gonna do ID and this is it. Simple enough. Again, this is unsafe code because here there might be zero devices at all. So this index is not gonna work, but instead I let it as be. Now, also because I set up the event, it doesn't mean that the device is actually listening. So what I might do here instead is take this out and just use it as a device. Right, it's an individual device. And then I can do device, and then device here, and let's see. Actually, yeah, this this is this sounds about right. So I'm gonna go ahead and initialize the device after I set up the event handler. So I'm gonna set this up. Oh, this doesn't work. I wonder why. I'm gonna close this window here. And what actually happens is that we set up the device, right? So there, there's the event handler here. There's the device initialization, but we actually never listen to what happens. Why is that? What can you do to listen to the device? Well, to make sure that we're actually listening to the device, we've got to make sure that the console application doesn't close. Again, the SDK is not fully baked yet, so maybe I need to add a listen method here. But what I'm going to do here is I'll create a manual reset event, call it exit signal. And we've got to make sure that the right namespaces are in place. And after the writing done, because all well, the application is done, but we still want to wait, we're going to do exit signal dot wait one. So it's going to be waiting for that semaphore to turn, but it never will while the application is running. But it will be listening and we'll get the access to the events. Not the best practice here, but again, for demo purposes, it should be okay. I'm gonna run the application now. All right, print's done. There's no output that tells me that the application is closed. So now is the moment of truth. I'm going to be pressing a button on my stream deck that you should see on camera as well. And let's see, I press a button. Aha, uh -huh. and we see that the 11 button was pressed. Press another button. 14th button was pressed and another button. Hey, look at that. It actually shows us the button numbers now. So this is kind of cool. So I can now react to individual button presses on the stream deck. But what if we can do an even better demo? Here, what you see on the stream deck right now is a set of buttons that I've pre-configured based on a custom profile that I built. Now, this profile is completely different from the stuff that you see in the stream deck software. That's okay. What I want to show that you can actually set up a custom button image for any of the button here through C-sharp code. Now that is a little bit revolutionary because I've never done that before, but what I can do here also through the help of the device manager is set keys. So I do device manager dot set key and Again, API design 101, right? Like this probably should be assigned to the device, but I instead do it through a device manager. That's okay. We'll fix that in the future release. It's the idea that matters of how this works. So I'm gonna use device as a connected device, int uh, key ID, and I'm gonna use key number, let's do key number one. And now I actually need to add binary content for the image that needs to be well, set for the key. And so what I wanna do here now is grab a snippet of code that I've written for uh, the SDK demo. I'm gonna open the actual the source code for the SDK for uh, DeckSurf. I'm gonna jump right over here to one of the plugins where I have a plugin. Well, actually it's not the SDK. It should be the actual DeckSurf CLI, which is my DeckSurf project. I'm gonna hop right over here and I'm gonna to go to my barn, which is a default plugin. Fun fact, the project was originally named Piglet, 
that's why you see here, this is Dexurf Plugin Barn, but I, then I renamed it because there was a nice domain. So I'm gonna go to my uh, commands. There is launch application. So let's see, there is a bunch of information here. So there's helper methods that are being used from the plugin itself. I don't really care about that, but what we wanna do is just get the binary content for the image and uh, resize it appropriately. Now, this is not the same as the, the configuration that I'm looking at right now because it's much more complex. And instead, what I wanna do is find that snippet that just gets the image from a file and then puts it back into the right content of the button. So I'm gonna copy this line here, image helpers resize image. I'll explain why shortly. So I'm gonna minimize this, minimize the SDK, go back to my code here. So first thing what I wanna do is create a byte array and call it, I don't know, test image. And it's gonna be, well, it's actually not gonna be anything. And test image is going to be file. We need to add the right namespace, system IO, read all bytes going to be, I think it's G and then it's run. I want to say it's run PNG or maybe it's JPEG. We'll find out. Okay. So this is going to read the bytes from the file. This is great. This is going to be my image file. Then I will paste this line that says the resized, uh, well, let's do it, image. It's gonna be the resize image that's using the image helpers that comes with the SDK. You do not need to write custom code or resize image for the Stream Deck buttons. You can just use the image helpers. So you're gonna resize the image and then see image helpers, get image buffer. Uh, we don't actually need to get the image buffer here because we have the binary content. And here I can pass my test image. Device constants, this is the uh, height and width. So the XL button size is 96 by 96. So this is gonna be used by default. This is great. So now I have my image and then I can just set the key. That's it. So now you again should be seeing my stream deck on camera and I'm going to launch this application and no file found. Okay, so as I suspected that this is probably a JPEG, let's try again. All right, and now you just saw that the first button right here, it changed this balloon. It is a custom image that I just set from an array of bytes. I loaded a JPEG, I resize it with the help of a helper that comes with the SDK and I set the key. That's it, that's how you can set keys. And now with this SDK, it means that from C Sharp, you can pass any image. You can generate it on the fly. Like you see an image here that I have, this game is not working right now, it's passive because the software is not running, but it actually showed me the CPU load in my stream deck. So this is again, something that is already possible, but I was just curious, how do I do that? But I could generate that image and provide it on the fly. So. That being said, go check out DeckSurf on the deck.surf website. Tell me what you think. There is documentation that I'm constantly writing that is, by the way, powered by DocFX. Shout out DocFX. And I'm excited to hear your feedback, your thoughts on what will you do to manage your stream deck with this SDK through managed.net code. Until next time.